On today's episode, we're going to show you how to stretch canvas. You might have noticed paper is a really smooth surface to work with and offers no resistance. But if you want to try a more traditional surface, canvas is a material that can offer a different painting experience. And it looks cool! Your first thought might be to go to a store and buy a pre-stretched canvas that's ready to be painted on, but we're going to show you how to build, stretch, and prime your own canvas. Here are some reasons why you should consider this. Number one, it's cheaper! Buying canvas in bulk and the need to stretch your bars is far more cost effective than buying pre-built canvases each time you want to paint. Number two, prepping your own canvas gives you control over every aspect of it. The size, shape, and texture of the surface are all customizable to your liking. Number three, it looks cool. Here are the materials that you'll need. Raw canvas, stretcher bars, staple gun and staple gun staples, gesso, a big brush, sandpaper, and a pair of scissors. Now let's get to work. And it looks cool. First, grab your stretcher bars and assemble them. You'll notice there are two sides to your stretchers. One is flat and one has a bevel. The bevel side is the front of the stretcher, so make sure all sides are the same. If you have difficulty joining them, you can use a mallet or hammer to knock them into place. Once you've done that, make sure your corners are 90 degrees. An easy way to do this is to hold it up to a door frame. If you happen to have a right angle tool, you can use this too. Check each corner and once they're at 90 degrees, you're ready to staple. Next, staple the corners. You'll want to do this on the back of the stretcher bar. Two staples per corner should suffice. Now we want to measure out and cut the canvas. Make sure to cut two to four inches of extra canvas for each side. There needs to be enough material to wrap around each edge. Now you're ready to cut the canvas. Grab your scissors and snip into the canvas. Using this cut as a guide, you can just tear the rest of your canvas by hand and it should rip straight. It's magic. It's magic. Lay your canvas flat and center your stretcher bars with the bevel side down. Now grab the center of one side and make your first staple. After that, grab the center of the opposing side, then pull the canvas so that it is top and make your second staple. You won't need to pull too hard, just enough so there's some tension. Now do the same for the other sides. You want to maintain an even tension across the canvas, so the best practice is to alternate sides as you staple center out and to avoid completing just one side at a time. When you get to the corners, you'll want to fold them in a way so they remain flat and hidden. Keep the folds uniform as you do them. Be sure to staple your folded corners securely to finish. Time to prime your canvas. To do this, we'll be using gesso. We prefer gesso that is studio grade as it is pre-mixed and ready to go. This is a messy process, so be sure to lay down a drop cloth or some newspaper before you begin. Prop your canvas up on something so it is not touching the drop cloth or newspaper. This will make the edges easier to dry without sticking to the bottom. Using a large brush, start applying the gesso to your stretched canvas. Move from the center of the canvas to the edges and sides using circular brush strokes to work the gesso into the canvas. Don't forget the sides. After an even application over the entire canvas, allow sufficient time for drying. The general rule is 24 hours. Inspect your canvas before applying a second coat of gesso. 
you'll want to look for uneven buildup. Use sandpaper to fix any bumps and smooth out the texture of your canvas. Now apply your second layer as evenly as possible. Since the canvas already absorbed a lot of gesso in the first layer, you will need much less of it for the second. The goal of priming with gesso is to create an ideal painting surface that is to your liking. For example, Mustafa likes a super smooth surface for his paintings, while I prefer more texture and polo well, Polo uses paper. And finally, give it a check to make sure no light is coming through. You're done. Nice. Now for our segment. Art Soul. Hi, and welcome to Art Soul. I'm your host, Brett, and with me is Mustafa and Polo. And on today's segment, I finally learned how to correctly hold a microphone. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about stretching canvas and providing some tips and pointers that we've picked up along the way that hopefully you can find useful. Mustafa, I'm going to start with you. You had some points that you wanted to address. Why don't you take the time to do so now? Yeah, so when it comes to stretching canvas, I want to talk about really the differences between buying a store-bought one and building your own. The store-bought one, besides being overpriced, they have this like really slick plastic sheen on top for the texture, which makes things really weird to work with. Especially if you're working with oils, um, it just doesn't really grab oil paint as well. Acrylics, it's a little bit more forgiving, but with oils, it's a little strange. My second point though is when you are stretching canvas, you want to make sure that you have properly primed it and covered it well with both coats. Um, and the, like we show in the video, I'm holding it up to the light, but what I'm looking for are these little pinholes of light. If you see any of that, you wanna make sure your gesso covers that because oil paint especially can seep right through those little pinholes and it can cause what's known as oil rot over time. And I'm talking about over years. Not all of us maybe store our paintings for that long. Um, some of us don't like our paintings enough to keep them around that long. I hate my paintings. Me too. Yeah. Um, no, I, I kind of agree with you on the store bot. I'm not a fan either. Um, I prefer the texture of just the raw canvas and just going over that. Um, I did want to ask you though about um, when, when you gesso a canvas, you like that really smooth surface. Mm -hmm. And is there a reason why? Yeah, so for me, I paint really, really uh, with thin layers and I also just like the way the brush responds to that smooth surface. But I also am not, you know, some might say, why not just work on paper then? I like the sort of tension that canvas can kind of give and bounce against that brush. And so that's why I like canvas, but I like this almost paper-like smoothness to the canvas. I respond really well to it. Yeah, canvas has a tendency also to be a little bit more, um, can hold up and take a little bit more beating as opposed to um, like a paper or something like that. I agree. Mm. Um, Polo, now you work primarily on paper. How did you come to um, like working on that surface? What do you find about that as opposed to canvas that's more beneficial to your practice? Um, canvas seems to be, especially, I mean, it's cheap to do it on your own, which is great. You can buy it in bulk and you can stretch it on your own, whatever size you want, whatever level of smoothness. That level of customization is, uh, I think, a bit too much for me. I like to, um, you know, worry about the effects and the visual effects in my painting and what's going on there. And I think that's just another level of not confusion, but just another level of consideration. And uh, so paper just kind of does that work for me. And more importantly, uh, I like a lot of drawn line quality in my um, paintings, or I guess you could call them sort of collages. And I use crayon and marker and pencil and all kinds of sort of drawing uh, media. So that just serves better on paper. Uh, it kind of goes like everything can work on the paper and not everything can work on the canvas. So. Um, a nice heavy tooth paper works. Is that kind of like good medium in between that compromise? Good. Um, and then I kind of just want to emphasize a couple points here at the end. Um, one about the the cost efficiency of building your own. I work on a lot of large scale works, um, 
between you know six feet to ten feet large. Um, so buying a, a canvas pre-made that size, I don't even know if they come that size, but it would be really expensive. Um, so for me, it's almost out of necessity that I would have to build my own. Um, but I, I do find it a little bit cheaper. And you, um, like we pointed out, there's a lot of customization when you get a um, build your own canvas. Yeah, and I just want to add to that that you can buy, you can get canvas that large just not from the store. You're probably somebody wealthy who's having a company build those out for you. And if you are that person, why are you watching us? <laughs> yeah, you're not watching us. <laughs> but maybe you are. Hi. So I'm actually opposite Mustafa when it comes to texture on my canvas. Um, I don't necessarily need it so smooth. Um, just for my work, I, I kind of like the texture um, and the thicker grain of the canvas because I use a lot of different materials and I collage things on the canvas and that tooth helps with um, emphasize that texture. Um, so for me, it's not as important um, to, to get to that smoothness. Okay, and then before we finish up here, I was gonna open it up to see if you guys had any other words of wisdom that perhaps our viewers could find useful. I do not, no, sorry. <laughs> stretch your own canvas. Buy a little toolkit for yourself, like we show in the video, and stretch your own canvas. It's so cheap, you guys. So cheap. And it's a fun process. I enjoy the process of building canvas. Yeah, you make your own little painting baby. Like, you create the canvas. Okay, then and then, the so that's the show. Um, and we will leave it there with um, painting babies. Painting so baby. If you make your own painting baby, leave a comment. <laughs> Down below. Share your painting babies. <laughs> and and like, what do we do? And like our video. And hit the bell for notifications and subscribe. Please subscribe. We can see that you're watching and you're not subscribed. Please subscribe. You can. <laughs> and it looks cool, take one. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> you said the line for me. <laughs> Would you say you like it rough? <laughs> cool.